story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Welcome and thanks for joining us on Core TV Primetime News. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. In our major story, Northern Governors Forum appeals to former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar to rally Nigeria's past leaders to help them curb insurgency. PDP warns residents of Gombe to remain alert and fight back alleged plot by an unnamed opposition party to disrupt peace in the state. Young Nigerians and Lagos are set to tap into the evolving billion dollars global video games market. In outside Nigeria now, South African President Jacob Zuma is back on the second term, promises social economic revolution. We'll begin tonight in northern Nigeria, where concerned by the incessant Boko Haram attacks in the region, Governor of Niger State and Chairman Northern Governors Forum, Babangida Aliu, has urged former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar to rally past leaders of the country to help them curb the Malis. Aliu made this known at the maiden convocation ceremony of the Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida University, Lapai, in Niger State. Ali, who is optimistic the security challenges in the northern states could be crushed in the next three months, insisted that with concerted efforts from prominent Nigerians, the horrendous situation in the north will be a thing of the past. The PDP has called on the people of Gombe State to remain alert and resist any plot to destroy the peace and unity they enjoy under the PDP-led administration. The party's National Publicity Secretary, Ulisa Meto, made the call in a statement in Abuja. Meto, who says that the PDP has uncovered a plot to disrupt the peace in the state, maintained that it would fail. He accused an opposition party of intending to use the instruments of propaganda as a deed in another state to achieve its objective. The PDP spokesman added that the party was sowing seeds of discard among the people of the state as a means to actualize its inordinate quest for power. According to him, the party has not been happy with the peace and rapid development going on in Gombe under the PDP-led administration. He maintained that at no time did the governor, Ibrahim Dankwambo-led administration in Gombe, clamped down on any party member or engaged in the destruction of another party's property, as alleged. Wife of Plateau State Governor Talatu Jang says women and children were worst hit by the two explosions that rocked Terminus Market in Jas. Jiang says the casualty figure and composition show that the most of the dead and injured were women and children. She says the incident took place at a time when considerable progress had been made in the peace building progress, process rather, in Platin. Jiang described the incident as a heartless, evil-minded attack by agents of darkness adding that the action is a clear demonstration of the height of man's inhumanity to man. She condoled with the families that had lost loved ones and wished the injured a quick recovery. The Independent National Electoral Commission in Bielsa says reaching out to people in Creek communities is posing great challenges in the ongoing permanent voter cards distribution in the state. The resident electoral commissioner Edwin Onwatarali who made the disclosure says the issuance of the cards ahead of the 2015 general elections was to correct any mistake before the elections. He says the exercise had been hitch free while adequate security was provided to safeguard the materials. Some of the electorate decried the delay in collecting the cards as well as missing names in the register. 
The Independent National Electoral Commission in Zamfara says it has issued permanent voter cards in 11 local government areas in the state. An spokesman in the state, Gabra Galadima, who made this known, says fresh registration will be done in Gusau, Gumi and Zumi local government areas on May 28. He added that majority of the polling units in Gusau, Gumi and Zomi have problem of multiple registration with many people registering more than once, while others' fingerprint could not be seen on the computer screen. A few units in the other 11 local governments, according to Galadima, also experienced the same problem, but it was not as bad as Gusau, Gumi and Zomi. He advised those not able to collect the permanent voter cards at the end of the exercise on Sunday to go to their local government secretariat and collect them. The use of motorcycles for commercial transport purposes has become popular in Nigeria due to its efficiency and door-to-door -door service. Safety measures for passengers and riders have become a concern for relevant authorities. Rashid Rashid takes a look at the compliance level for the use of crash elements, ailments rather, in Ekit. Motorcycles are initially used by private owners but it has now become a mode of transportation that has provided jobs for many. Passengers say it is affordable and assesses every place they intend to go. But the safety of both riders and passengers have not been guaranteed due to the non-compliance to safety measures, especially the use of crash helmets. We have different categories of road users. Uh, some of them are shielded, some are exposed. Anybody that is riding on motorcycle is already an exposed road user either as a passenger or as the rider yourself. So there's no way an Okada will be involved in an accident that you will not sustain injury. And in most cases, the most serious of these injuries is the injuries that affect the head region. It is very good for your own safety to make use of the crash helmet. And that's why the enforcement came into being. Some of the motorcycle riders say they are aware of its importance, but gave excuses why they don't use crash helmets. Of the our tank. That's the first statement there. Where are your elements simply? To see the problem of this element. Okada rider, we came out from our house in around uh, 5 o'clock. In the evening, that's uh, almost 13 hours. Put element. Ah, this is it's a load. I'm sure it is not all of them that sit on Okada from morning to night without break. It's not possible. It's not possible. Once in a while, you have a break. Okay, once in a while you have a break. The assistant corps commander operations of the road safety in Ekiti State said the non-compliance by riders is deliberate. Something that we cannot compromise. Something that we cannot compromise. We must continue. We know people are used to maybe being defiant to the laws. As we all look at us, we have evil mind. If government asks us to do something, we can find it hardly to do it. Yeah, especially this issue of airmen. Some are willing to use, but some cannot avoid to buy the airmen. Because some, uh, some of us, we are not the owner of the bag that we are riding. So to buy the airmen is very difficult for us. If the government can produce the helmet for us free of charge, we appreciate it. The Okada helmet is, is very, very much available now all over the country. And it's affordable. One Okada helmet, I mean crash helmet, or the other it does not cost more than maybe 2005, 1005, depending on the type that you can afford. And uh, socioeconomic status of uh, most of them is not too far below the extent of making, sacrificing one or two things to ensure their own safety. The inability of the riders to comply to the rules always leads to delay in traffic flow as officials make efforts to apprehend defaulters. If people who are now afraid of being accosted or being arrested or caught up by the agents, okay, by our men, those ones will now try to maybe hold on for a while, park in certain places and uh, build up the traffic on their own there, artificially, in an attempt to not to get to where they could be arrested. So, of course, naturally you see them parked and they will think that is a traffic jam, but no, 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 no. no. The introduction of a mobile court by the Federal Road Safety Corps is seen as an effort put in place to ensure compliance and safeguard the lives of road users. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adoe Kitty. The video games market industry is expected to be worth $87 billion by the year 2017. Some young startups in the city of Lagos are strategizing to tap into this evolving market. Correspondent Martins Dixon compiled this report presented from our studios. 
In this ordinary looking office in the Nigerian city of Lagos, young entrepreneurs are working to create a gaming revolution. Until now, Africa's video game market hasn't figured on the global stage. But within just 18 months, the team here have created 70 online games whose popularity reaches well beyond Nigeria's borders. Somebody comes in, remembers something he saw somewhere or outside, we discuss it, we put it in the game. Uh, so it happened. The idea can come from anywhere. And sometimes uh, we also look at games that are very popular across the world and say, okay, look at this game. Uh, why is it popular? We try to learn from it and see how we can you know, apply that in our games or even do an African version of that same game. What I like in Nigeria video games is one, the local content, okay? Because it tends to give you that everyday feel. For example, the Okada hustle. You know, it tells you how you ride on your bike, trying to avoid so many obstacles on your way home or on your way to work. Two, it's very simple. Um, all you need to do is um, gain as much coins as possible and avoid the obstacles. With most gamers in Africa preferring to play online rather than on home consoles, its founder, Huge Obi, is well aware of the potentials of the mobile market. Mobile is massive in this part of the world. Um, it has the highest penetration, especially for internet users. Um, and we are exporting a lot of our games onto mobile. With 100 million people using mobile phones in the African nation, cracking Nigeria's mobile phone gamers market would be a good game to win. The Chairman Academic Staff Union of Universities Lagos State University Chapter, Idris Adekunle, says the Lagos State Government should make quality education affordable to all. He spoke to Omotayo Alo. He has the report. The strike action embarked upon by teachers of the Lagos State University over increase in tuition for students has caused protests from students of the university. The chairman, Idris Adekunle, says the state government did not implement the federal government's agreement signed in December 2010. It says there is no reason why Lasso teachers should be an exception to getting what rightfully belongs to them. Politics were interested in sustenance of that university. It is meant for the downtrodden. Education is the right of every citizen of this country, irrespective of the income background of their parents. Akim Animashaun says the government is not interested in causing them for both students and teachers of the university. Policies are made, for, are made by government for the people. And the government we have in Lagos State is a very, very responsible government that listens to the people. So when we make policies and that does not favor um, the people, we are ready to listen and we're ready to sit down and listen to your own, you know, proposition on what ought to be the, you know, the, the right thing to do. Idris adequately advised the state government to adopt the policy of admitting more students with less tuition fees. It says that the university has not been admitting to its full capacity. We feel pained as parents, we feel pained as lecturers to go on to this action, but we believe that we just have no choice but to embark on this. The dwindling standard of education has been attributed to the numerous strikes and unstable calendar in Nigerian universities. The strike by lecturers of the Lagos State University may yet obstruct the students' learning process. Omotayo Alo, for TV News, Lagos. The technique used by a group of northern Nigerian craftsmen to dye cotton sheets indigo has survived for more than 500 years, but the risks of extinction are now higher. The 125 pits were constructed in a walled compound in Central Kano in Kufamata in, 19, in 1498 and assigned to individual families whose descendants still control the trade. A commitment to a centuries-old practice may have helped dye pit operators with stand developments that have devastated Kano's textile industry. So all this ingredient will mix together inside the thing to give the color from blue to light. Customers have diminished significantly over the last two years, especially Western tourists. Domestic demand for textiles, however, remains strong. The dye pit operators are now considered the city's last indigenous textile producers, but even 
the apple has declined. The name of this design is three pillars of Kano. Honesty, hospitality and friendship. Up next is business news coming up shortly after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 koba per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. The global competitive map is changing with the rapid advancement of Africa. If you're not speaking to Africa this time, perhaps you're not speaking at all. Join the continent leading public relations practitioners at the 26th edition of the All African Public Relations Association Conference, April Mauritius 2014. Venue Le Meridian Hotel, Point Ox Piment, Mauritius. Date 27th to 31st May 2014. Theme Advancing Africa. For further details, visit www.afapr.org. Africa, it's time to find your goals. Support it back. This one wash challenge will test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG everyday quality brand. Every day, every hour, every minute. News break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as a savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. You're watching Cool TV Primetime News. For more on our news and programs, you can check us out on our Facebook page. It's www.facebook.com forward slash Cool TV News, as well as follow us on Twitter at Cool TV News NG. Uh, you can watch previous programs on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Cool TV Space News. On business news tonight, the United States has won a World Trade Organization ruling against China in a dispute over tariffs on U.S. luxury cars. A World Trade Organization panel found no basis for duties that China imposed between 2011 and 2013. The U.S. described it as a significant victory. China began tariffs on saloons and off-road vehicles with an engine capacity of 2.5 liters or more in retaliation for U.S. trade policies. China argued when it introduced the charges that U.S. car makers such as General Motors and Chrysler had deceived government subsidies, received government subsidies and flooded the Chinese market with the cars, which harmed China's own car industry. Up next now. Sport. Moving ahead now, uh, just before sports, imagine the market score stocks rose to a six month high as an improvement in China's manufacturing added to signs of stabilization in the world's second biggest economy. A Chinese gate of Hong Kong traded shares surged to a five week high as China Gas Holdings Limited jumped 6%. South Africa's benchmark measure crossed the 50,000 mark for the first time ever. The bat slide 0.3% as the army took control of the country and suspended its constitution. Turkey's bonds climbed as the central bank 
cut its benchmark uh, reporters rate by 50 basis points to 9.5 percent. The MSCI Emerging Markets Index added 0.8 percent to 1,040.04. Its second day of gains, a Chinese manufacturing gauge rose to a five-month high in May, signaling a recovery after government moves to counter an economic slowdown. The developing markets gauge has increased 3.6% this year and trades at 10.7 times projected 12-month earnings. The MSCI World Index of Developed Countries has advanced 1.7% in 2014 and is valid at a multiple of 14.8. The FTSE, GSE Africa All Share Index rose as high as 50,037.05 before trading up 0.5% to 49,904.43 in Johannesburg. Up next, our top stories making headline in the sporting arena. UEFA Championship going on between Atletico Madrid and, of course, Real Madrid took a dramatic turn when Real Madrid uh, equalized at the last minute of the final whistle. Of course, it's still ongoing uh, with both teams at peace. 1-1 draw. And back in Nigeria, Nigeria Premier League side Kano Pilas have received a new 64-seater bus donated by the Kano State Government. In a chat with Go Club chairman Ibrahim Haruna, the lauded governor Rabi Kwankwazo for fulfilling his promise to reward the team after back-to-back -back victories in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Meanwhile, the team have received the match bonus increase from 40,000 Naira to 50,000 Naira for away wins with an home win increasing from 20,000 to 25,000 Naira. Kanopilas will host El Kanemi Warriors in Week 16 Nigeria Premier League match at the Amadou Bello Stadium in Kaduna on Sunday. And not fewer than 15 countries will participate at the International Badminton Classics to be hosted by Nigeria. According to the news agency of Nigeria, reports says the championship will take place in Lagos from June 4 to 7. Some of the countries expected at the competition are USA, Austria, France, Israel, Canada, Slovenia, Czech Republic, New Zealand, Botswana and Uganda, amongst others. The championship is set to be an open championship for male and female players as the winner was smart home with $15,000. Chelsea has confirmed an agreed term with Paris Saint-Germain for the sale of David Lewis. Widespread reports on Friday had claimed the two clubs were in advanced talks over the Brazil international in a deal that would make Lewis the world's most expensive defender. The Blues confirmed that a deal was in place for the 27-year-old but made no reference to the value of the transfer. The former Benfica defender is expected to sign a four-year contract with a further year on option when the deal is made official uh, when the summer transfer window opens on June 10. Bobby Zamora's last-minute gold and 10-man Queen's Park Rangers have returned to the Premier League as they beat Derby 1-0 in the championship playoff final. Queen's Park Rangers were reduced to 10 men uh, when Gary O'Neill was sent off for a 60th minute professional foul on Jenner Rizal. His dismissal prompted pressure from the Rams and Rob Green saved smartly from Chris Martin and Simon Dawkins. But the hopes held firm and substitute Zamora curled in from 12 yards to end an estimated 80 million promotion windfall. We'll take a break now and we'll be back with stories on the foreign scene. The global competitive map is changing with the rapid advancement of Africa. If you're not speaking to Africa this time, perhaps you're not speaking at all. Join the continent leading public relations practitioners at the 26th edition of the All African Public Relations Association Conference, Afro Mauritius 2014. Venue Le Meridian Hotel, Point Oxpiment, Mauritius. Date 27th to 31st May 2014. Theme Advancing Africa. For further details, visit www.kfapr.org. 
all Africa, it's time to find your goals supported by... This one wash challenge will test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 comma per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. Nigerians continue to Night, the city of Lagos wins a dog as all rules. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. Our federal high we course. break the news. One Nigerian. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news spreads. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. Our 24 hour news station. Thanks for joining us again. Reports just reaching us now says another bomb blast has occurred in Jazz at Bauchi Road near the University of Jazz where students were watching the UFO finals. The details are still sketchy now but we'll keep you updated as we lay our hands on the details of that report. Also at Nigeria now, South African President Jacob Zuma has vowed to spearhead a radical social economic transformation as he's sworn in for a second term before dignitaries and a cheering crowd of thousands. The ceremony took place in the amphitheater of Pretoria's English colonial-style union buildings, the seat of government, where just five months before the Nelson Mandela's body lay in the state. Zuma paid tribute to the former leader and founder of the nation, hailing the work he did to transform South Africa from international pariah to toast of the world. Presidents and prime ministers from across Africa, including Zimbabwe's Robert Mugabe and Nigeria's Good Luck Jonathan, attended the ceremony. I, Jacob Gedleisegisa Zuma, swear. I, Jacob Gedleisegisa Zuma, swear that I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. That I will be faithful to the Republic of South Africa. So help me God. We have successfully completed the first phase of our transformation. Today marks the beginning of the second phase of our transition from apartheid to a national democratic society. This second phase will involve the implementation of radical social economic transformation. Key targets in this regard will be to eradicate corruption and efficiency and inefficiency in the public service. Away from there to Somalia, where Shabab rebels launched a major attack on the national parliament on Saturday, setting up a car bomb and penetrating the building with suicide commandos, leaving at least eight dead, police said. Uh, police and witnesses said. A huge car bomb went up outside the gates of the parliament in central Mogadishu, and a string of smaller blasts followed. Intense gunfire were also heard coming from inside the complex. Police said at least four attackers were killed, adding that a number of people had also been wounded. Witnesses said Shabab militants stomped into the complex while members of parliament were meeting inside. A spokesman for Shabab confirmed that the group was responsible for the attack. Ukraine is preparing for a presidential election seen as crucial to its very survival after months of turmoil that has driven the country to the brink of civil war. The election comes with tension running high after a bloody upsurge in fighting in the east where pro-Moscow separatists launched an insurgency against Kiev's rule seven weeks ago. Prime Minister Asni Yashenyok issued an appeal for people to turn out to defend Ukraine, which has been a deep crisis since street protests forced out the Kremlin-backed regime in February. But rebels warned they would prevent voting in their strongholds in the industrial heartland on the Russian border.
The election is seen as the most important since the independence in 1991, with Ukraine not only battling to stay united, but also to stave off threatening bankruptcy and fears Russia could cut off vital gas supplies. Opinion polls said the vote is likely to go to a runoff on June 15, leaving the country in limbo for another three weeks. The authorities are mobilizing over 75,000 police and volunteers to try to ensure security alongside around 1,200 international observers. Lebanese President Misha Semen has called on parliamentarians to elect a successor without delay as his mandate comes to a uh, an end amid huge divide between the country's two main camps. Sleman's mandate has expired, and the government, headed by Prime Minister Tam Salem, is set to assume all executive powers. Parliament has convened five times in the past two months to try to elect a president ahead of the expiry of Sleman's mandate, but failed each time due to a lack of quorum. In a final speech to MPS, ministers and diplomats as they prepare to leave the presidential palace near Beirut, Sleiman called on Parliament to elect a president without delay, or else it will be a responsibility for the dangers that a void in, us in this post might bring. According to Sleiman, the presidency is a symbol of unity in the country. A presidential vacuum constitutes a threat to stability in Lebanon, especially if the vacuum is intentional. This is the third time Lebanon sees a presidential void after 1988 during the civil war in 2007. To end Cool TV primetime news here again are the top stars. We told you that Northern Governor's firm appealed to former head of state Abdul Salam Abubakar to rally Nigeria's past leaders to help curb insurgency. PDP has warned residents of Gombe to remain alert and fight back alleged plot by an unnamed opposition party to disrupt peace in the state. And that's it on Core TV Primetime News tonight. I am Nifemi Ogunchoye. Thank you for watching.